All right, thank you. Well, it's my pleasure today to welcome everyone to the first in the coalition's Budget Hero webinar series. Uh, we'd like for all of you to be budget heroes. This is a series that will highlight the programs that uh, are most successful with the coalition and programs that can have the most dramatic impact on your budget. It's, uh, it's great that we kick off this series with uh, one of our, our great partners, that's Paymerang. Paymerang has been with us for quite a while and uh, well over 150 schools are utilizing Paymerang. I won't, uh, I won't belabor the introduction. I will turn it over to Tom Smith now uh, to get right into the program. Tom. Thank you, Mr. Cruz. Everyone, thank you guys for joining me today, uh, taking time out of the busy schedules and fitting me in at month end. That's fantastic. I greatly appreciate it. On the line with me today, I have Miss Beverly Smith. Beverly, are you able to hear me and um, say hello? Uh, yes, I am. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for your attendance as well, Beverly. I wanted to bring someone that works closely on y'all side of the desk. Y'all, now you know I'm from Virginia. Uh, <laughs> but I wanted to bring someone that sits on your side of the desk. And throughout the discussion, she is going to be giving you guys her feedback. She's been with us now. Tell me if I'm wrong, Beverly, but about three, two and a half, three years now. That's correct. And she's a power user. She uses us for multiple uh, aspects of our business, including student refunds. So Beverly, again, I appreciate it. No relationship group. There's a lot of Smiths out there. What can you do? But uh, Beverly is world class. and I, I greatly appreciate her presence here. Brief overview of who we are, what we do, how we help. Um, education is our biggest segment nationwide. These are all the states that we have higher ed clients in. Ignore the West Virginia. I'm embarrassed. There's just not much there besides back roads and mountains, but I am working on it. Um, I do have one in South Dakota, though. And these are some of our strategic partnerships. The one that's most important is the Coalition for College Cost Savings. Um, and really what that does, your guys' membership to that gives you access to programs like Pamerang that other institutions, associations, organizations, et cetera, would not have access to. Uh, I am not your typical sales guy where it's you got to open the wallet or the purse. It's actually a cash flow generator for the institution. And I can get into that at a high level as we go along through the discussion here. <clears throat> We work with over 100 accounting systems, ERPs. These obviously are the most prevalent in the higher end market, whether it's Junzabar, CX, EX, J1, which is what Beverly uses, um, Aleutian Banner, Aleutian Colleague, Workday, Oracle, Great Plains. We're not actually touching any other aspects of the accounting system. We're just working alongside of it. And again, I can explain how that works here as we go forward. Sample client list, we work with everyone big and small. Um, there you are, Beverly, front and center, Reinhardt University, season Georgia, uh, go Bulldogs. Um, but again, we work with everyone nationwide. We're all cut checks the same way. And all we're trying to do is have AP working on more strategic initiatives for the institution um, and taking some of the manual from, from the day to day that is involved with accounts payable. Again, we work with over 100, but I'll, I'll reiterate here. These are the ones that are most prevalent in the higher ed space. Jen's a bar, there you are, Beverly. Lucian Banner, whether it's colleague, or Lucian Colleague, whether it's Colleague with Informer, Banner 8, Banner 9, Oracle, uh, Microsoft GP, QuickBooks, Blackball, and more prevalent in the K-12 space. But again, it's, it's really a seamless integration with these systems. Uh, and I can explain, and Beverly can help me explain as we as we go along with the discussion. So today's agenda, I just want to discuss the state of accounts payable and accounting. There's a lot of manual work involved. It's a, a lot of labor, intensive labor um, that we can help with. I'm going to discuss how we can help with our payment automation. And if we have time, I'll do a software demo. This is being recorded. So if you guys need to run or jump off, this a recording will be supplied to you guys. 
And then I'm going to briefly, briefly touch over our incoming invoice automation solution, which is fantastic if you have invoices flowing in from multiple departments um, and you're trying to centralize that process, get the invoices processed, send them off for approval, ultimately post it directly to the GL. I pulled this information from the Institute of Finance and Management the IOFM, and it has been discovered that 84% of AP's time today is spent on very manual clerical tasks. And that payment automation can save anywhere from 16 to 18 hours a week. All Paymering is trying to do is flip that 84% on its head. So now Accounts Payable is working on more strategic initiatives. And we have found that if you can do that, you can develop AP individuals, you can groom them, you can promote them, help them progress their career, move them to a staff accountant role, a junior accountant role, which ultimately is what everyone wants anyway. Again, it's really just to take the manual, uh, the labor intensive work and flip it on its head. So AP is spending time on more strategic initiatives for the institution. Beverly, I don't know if you can relate at all to the statistic here prior to uh, prior to pay meringue and 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 how it is after. Absolutely. When we onboarded with pay meringue, we were a five person business office. We had some attrition. We had one person leave and was were really having a difficult time replacing that person and filling that spot. And we found as we went on board with Paymerang and began to see some efficiencies there that we've been able to not replace that person and just divide the work up amongst the, the, the four that remain and have a much more efficient and effective office going. And then you can promote people and, and I'll reiterate again, it's really a lot of the work people don't really necessarily like doing anyways. Ms. Smith, I'm sure you can relate. So yes. it's, <laughs> It's really just to take the, the physical labor involved. Um, again, so we're working on more strategic initiatives. And there's a lot of turnover in the higher ed space, whether I guess quiet quitting is the term now or people getting burnt out. And if you can take some of the manual away, again, AP tends to stick around longer and you can move them in new roles that, that they ultimately wanted anyway. Correct. We've not only been able to reduce the workforce in our own department, but we have taken on uh, the grants management administration role for the university. And I've been able to promote my accounts payable person who was all, only accounts payable to begin with. Now she is my grants management coordinator also. Again, it's, it's a step in the right direction when it comes to career development. Personally, I think that, and again, that's ultimately what people want especially in the accounting world. So it's um, mm -hmm. it's all good. Uh, Beverly, some of these might look familiar. Uh, AP teams send, tend to be bogged down, draining in work, whether it's du duplicate invoice problems, tens of thousands yeah. of payments, manually reconciling checks, making sure they get to where they need to go. They're actually cashed, et cetera. Multiple approvals, whether it's a wet signature on a check that's going out the door, some places require everything to have a wet signature. Some places require anything over ten to twenty thousand um, dollars. Ever changing compliance, NACHA compliance is a fiasco now. It's yes. all it's all good and nice, but it is kind of a, a heartburn to keep up with. Mm -hmm. Local payments, maybe pressure to reduce op uh, operational cost. Bail payments, you have to run payments throw in a sheet in the practice or return funds to the state at that point as unclaimed property. What Pamering is trying to do is fix all of this. So we no longer need to worry about this. And that's what we are doing. This is your typical uh, outdated in-house solution. You're printing, you're signing, you're approving, you're mailing, you're reconciling checks. Um, you might be delivering a positive pay file to a treasury management system. If someone wants to enroll into ACH, that used to be a good practice. It's no longer necessary to keep any sort of sensitive banking data inside of Genzabar, GP, Colleague, whatever the accounting system might be. 
be my at the advantage of vendor method change on a master vendor record or a master vendor file, remittance advice going out the door, manually delivering car details and remittance advice to the supplier, the account receivable office, manually reconciling checks, putting down the check, making sure it's actually getting to where it needs to go. The UPS has gotten to be very slow. So that is an ever growing problem. Beverly, you're laughing. So I think you can relate there. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. For anything that's unsettled, you have to run through an achievement practice or return funds to the state as unclaimed property. E-compliance, that's your PCI DSS, your NACHA, um, your OFAC. We manage all that for you. And I'd be shocked if no accounts payable individual in this room has never, ever gotten a phone call to their to their business line with a quite payment inquiry question. I could go on and on, I'm not going to. The only difference, the only process change group is you upload the payments, you approve the batch, you fund the batch, and you are done. It's very akin, I like to say, to an ADP or a Paycom business model, where you would provide a biweekly payroll file and they would essentially pay the employees. We're talking about essentially the same thing, just paying the supplier in the manner that they prefer. Whether that's card, ACH, check, um, we the goal is to get the funds moving to that supplier very rapidly because as you know, vendors don't usually like to sit around and, and wait to get paid. So the way it works is in your system, and Beverly, before I start going with how it works, I don't know, can you describe maybe your process prior to starting with Paymarang, whether how you were paying your suppliers? Uh, um, yes, very convoluted process. Uh, the invoices would come in, they would come in by email, they would come in by snail mail, they would come in because somebody dropped them under our door. Um, it just really depended. And then we would have to go through the whole uh, approval process then the checks would be written. And um, for those of you that still have to sign checks, there was one night I was at 3.30 in the morning still signing uh, student refund checks during COVID. Um, I've signed hundreds and thousands of checks. And that has probably been the biggest trickle down yay for me, for my position. Uh, it has saved so much time on the reconciliation side because you not are not reconciling reconciling excuse me individual checks. You are reconciling batches that you have already approved the checks. So it's not like you're recreating the wheel and having to do it over and over again. And then if the a order. payment is returned, it's a very easy process in our system. And then the auto vendor ad. If you need to add a new vendor into Genzabar or GP, your colleague, um, can you just, we, we build that out for you. So it's not right, Beverly, click, click, click over here and Genzabar and click, click, click over here. And ring. No. Uh, it's a simple, they're on the file, you send it to us and we build it out. Yes. When our payables go in weekly, a file is produced and sent to Paymarang that I have approved. And then I approve the batch. I have to match the batch and approve it. And that's it. If the text to be issued file or a CTBI report out of Genzabar is the terminology for Genzabar, um, or a text to be issued file that you upload out of your accounting system, it's very simple. It's very similar to delivering a positive pay file to a treasury management system. Uh, but then we deliver the positive pay file to our bank, our bank, bank core bank, which dramatically speeds up bank rec. One. We validate all the checks, number two, and three, we uh, do all the exceptions that come with it. Very similar process, checks to be issued, file, send that to our portal, that's step one. All that file is telling us to do is go pay this supplier, that supplier, regardless of payment type, because our network will decision that for you. Step two is you fund the batch of payments or the lump sum of payments to a for benefit of clearing account. The bank we use is Bank Core Bank. It's an FDIC insured, five billion in asset, NASDAQ traded bank in Delaware. From there, we take care of everything else for you. Now we're probably wondering how this is going to work in my books. I can explain it at a high level. Beverly, feel free to feel free to add on as you see fit. 
But really all you do is in GP, it's called a checkbook. You would create a new bank account, not actually attached to any bank. And Genzibar, it's called a subsidiary, right? Beverly, yours is probably yes. just named Amarang. Yes. Uh, or is the out account. And Banner, it's it's essentially you treat it like a like a bank account that's not attached to any bank. You could use when you're getting invoices ingested, you could use a two-digit AP type, like a PY. If that's used for payroll, you can use a PM or a PMG. Select that pay marine clearing account. Everything is paid and reconciled, and you are done. Yes. It is a very seamless process. The when the payment file is uploaded, I get a notice from my accounts payable specialist that it's ready for approval and she copies my financial analyst on that same email. I go into Pay Meringue, I approve the batch, I respond to that email, done. That's all I say is done. From there, my financial analyst goes in and initiates the wire. It comes back to me in an email. I go in and approve it and once again, done. And you were... I was, when, when this was many moons ago, but you had 10 bank accounts in Genzibar? Yes. How many, is it still around that number? You just made a new one and it's Pay Meringue and- that's... Yes. Okay. We still and have so 10. We only operate out of one of them, but the activity in that one operating count has greatly decreased. Because now you only have, well, you have, of, of course, other odds and ends. Right. But now yeah. for the majority, you only have that one wire to reconcile off your main operating account. All yeah. the payments you want Pamarine to make, you batch up, you run through that Pamarine clearing account, everything paid and reconciled, and the institution is done. Yes. Just another visual. You upload a single file for all payments, checks to be issued file. Uh, you use our secure portal, create a batch, approve the batch. Now you don't have the one wire to reconcile instead of potentially hundreds of checks, cards, ACHs, et cetera. Everything is paid and reconciled and, and you guys are done. That's where we come into play. A lot of your top suppliers we are already paying today. For an example, a Sodexo, uh, a Chartwells, Aladdin, Aramark. We already know their preferred method, method of payment. It's electronic. So we'll just continue to pay them that way. But for those that aren't, we'll first see if they'll take a virtual visa debit card. There's obvious benefits to accepting a card. They get quicker funds cleaner. It lowers their DSO. And through y'all's coalition membership, you guys get a nice cashback reward off everything that goes off the virtual visa debit card from day one of usage. Not everyone's going to want to take card. We understand that. You guys know that. We know that. We all know that. If they're not, we'll move to ACH. We'll do all the supplier research, enablement, enrollment. We vet them to make sure they're legitimate. We'll send them a secure link, dual factor authentication. They log in one time. Um, they type in their banking information. You guys can't see it. We can't see it. Remittance is sent same day. Funds are in their account first thing next business day. And for those that still want to check, you, you're still going to have some. We're slowly getting off check over the years, but uh, there are going to be some suppliers that want check. We will send them a private branded check on the institution's behalf. It's going to have the institution name on it, the institution logo on it. The only difference with the check is the banking and routing, and that's going to be that of the for benefit of account because that's where the funds are being drawn off of. Because no payments are drawn off the account, Paymarang has a reconcilement team that does nothing but chase outstanding payments by the expected date of settlement. So Beverly, you, you kind of alluded to this earlier, but the UPS has gotten to be slow. Yes. We, now wait 20, we now wait 28 days outstanding. At 28 days outstanding, if the check hasn't been settled, we will be notified in our system and we will reach out to that particular supplier to ensure settlement, whether that's by phone call email or both cards we deliver the card details in a variety of ways which is five so it's not just an email program where things get sent back to ap um, to figure out on their own terms we can do a secure email if that is the preferred method don't get me wrong but we can do a secure fax as well straight through processing stp 
we can hand key into a payment portal, or the holy grail is we can pick up the phone and call them, which is huge because a lot of places accept card, but they have an, they have an accounts receivable individual who works from two to four on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and they take card, but you got to call them. We have that capability within our network. Because we deliver the card details in the manner the supplier prefers, that leads to more that leads to higher card acceptance, which leads to more cashback reward for the institution. And again, 90% settle within three days at seven days outstanding, very similar to the paper check. Uh, we will reach out to that particular supplier to ensure settlement. <laughs> ACH, if there's a reject, we'll know immediately. Um, ACH is clockwork. We'll reach out, get updated banking information. We will also send them an updated NACHA file to fill out, which is nice because NACHA compliance has gotten to be quite complex. And then we store that so the institution does not have to, again, no longer to store any sort of sensitive banking data inside of the accounting system used to be a best practice, but with malware, ransomware, all these wares now running about in the world, just no longer need to do that. Could you talk, Beverly, about your reconciliation process and, and um, returning funds to the state and achievement and how that was significantly uh, reduced upon your pay ring usage? Um, that was a biannual process here at the university, and I'll be honest, it was fairly painful um, okay. to, to go through just because, you know, time passes and you forget what it was for to begin with. And you may have someone that had a stale check, but it's still on your payroll and you wonder why they never cashed that check. But um, since then, we get we have gotten quite a few refunds from pay meringue, but we just house them in an account and it has become much more streamlined because the, the work has been done. They are much fewer than they have been in the past. So it has, it has streamlined that process. Well, now you have 200 people chasing down payments and, and doing yes. the, man, the manualitis, if you would, that um, has been omitted from the back business office, which is nice. Yeah. Yes. Again, everything we're doing on the back end, supplier research, enablement, enrollment. With ACH fraud on the rise, we vet them to make sure they're legitimate, ask them to verify invoice details. Um, then we'll send them the link, they, the secure link. They type in their banking, funds are in their account first thing, nice business day. Data compliance and higher education, that's your GLBA, your FERPA, your SOC 2 Type 2, uh, your PCI DSS, your OFAC your HECVAD, your VPAT. Uh, we manage all that and we send your auditors a nice packet of those credentials whenever they want to see it. Okay. When you submit a batch, we review it real time, make sure everything's good to go. The amount that you wired is the amount that you want to pay. And then we start processing payments. We do four processes a day, 9.30, 11.30, 1.30, and 3.30. We have folks in Oregon, Washington, California, Hawaii. Um, so if we get fi file and funds before any of those times, uh, we start processing payments. Um, five methods of delivery for cards, again, which leads to higher card acceptance. ACH funds are in their account first thing next business day. Checks private branded so they know it's coming specifically from you guys. Remittance advice. We're sending, it's normally the remittance advice you would see at the bottom of the checks. Um, we send that for regardless of payment type or who's getting paid electronically for card and ACHs. So the cash applicators can have good cash application and be able to post the cash where necessary. Because no payments are drawn off your account, we do have the reconcilement team that does nothing but chase outstanding payments. Um, a lot of my higher ed institutions will tell Tell us we virtually eliminated the need to return funds to the state or stale check or, or what have you. Yeah. We're very client and vendor supportive. We're not calling your vendors each and every day to see if they'll take a virtual visa debit card. Don't worry. Because um, then they're just going to turn around and call Beverly and say, hey, Beverly, who is this other Smith? Tom, is that a real name? And why does he keep calling me? 
what we might do though is every eight to nine months, just give them a ring, say, hey, Beverly, I have a payment on behalf of Lion. I was wondering if you had a business practice thing and you would accept electronic for this paper check. The answer is still yes or no. If it's a no-go, no questions asked, we'll send them a, a check, have a nice day. And if you think about it, that is an AP best practice is to reach out from time to time and see if there's a conversion available. Um, again, a much cheaper way of paying somebody and a much more efficient way of paying somebody other than paper check. The cherry on top through the coalition membership, you guys get access to programs like this, um, which would qualify you for rewards. So in summary, we're doing all the work, we're maintaining all the compliance, we're chasing down all the outstanding payments, doing all the processing, and the cherry on top is you guys are getting paid on top. Beverly, do you want to talk? Go ahead. <laughs> you want to say something. Yes, that that has actually been a, a nice little uh, bonus there. It it the quarterly rewards that we receive has covered any and all fees. Plus, we have um, most of you know that work in a business office or you know the finance side of things. Typically, your departments don't generate revenue per se, but because of this and due to the savings in not having the the number of checks running through our operating bank account that we had, we have started receiving interest on our bank account also. So it's almost like a double double type dividend there that has shown a actual revenue generation for our department. When budget cuts came through last year, we were able to show that, you know, we didn't have to cut the budget because our budget, because we had generated revenue in that amount. So kind of turn the bank business office into a cost center, into a profit center, mm -hmm. which is, as the, which as the controller, I'm sure is, is kind of nice, right? It is. It is. <laughs> um, these are these are options, and uh, and Beverly, I do want you to talk about your student refund experience because I do have someone on the call that's that's interested in that. Okay. Uh, but uh, I just discussed how we paid invoices. It's a pre-funded virtual Visa debit card to match the invoice amount, one-time use, and then the card essentially goes away, a ghost card if you would. Um, so there's no plastic lying around. And, and as we discussed, we pay, via, we pay invoices via ACH and check as well. Student refunds, what we can do there is send the student issued email and e-check. With a few clicks, out comes their, their mobile, their live check. They can mobile deposit it anywhere in the world. They can print the check out and take it to the bank. They just have to have a U.S. bank account. We do employee expense reimbursement. A lot of institutions take us up on that. Um, what we would do there is a simple employee campaign. We send an email, the employee would type in their banking information. We can simply send ACHs directly to their account. And we also offer grant and foundation payments. We do millions of those a year. That's simply done via check of ACH. It's important to note that these are value added options. Okay, they're not mandated. Um, it's, it's just a lot of our higher ed clientele asked us to help with these headaches, so to say. And these are the um, these are the methods we came up with. So Beverly, with that being said, I don't know if you wanted to talk about your student refund process. I know I I get that's a big pain for higher education institutions. I'm aging myself now, but when I was in college, that was one of the first things I did. Nowadays it doesn't really work like that. <laughs> So I don't know, a different generation, I guess. But um, anyway, if you want to talk about your process, I would appreciate it. Sure, absolutely. Um, prior to Pay Morang, our process was what probably what many of you are still doing. When um, student refunds, when it came time, when the money was pulled down, my accounts receivable specialist would work with financial aid to determine what students were eligible for refunds and how much those refunds were for. Those would be entered into a batch in Genzabar, and then checks would be printed from that batch, checks that I would have to sign each one of those checks. And then 
we tried to mail them, but a lot of students still wanted to come pick them up. And then you had, you know, the parent calling, why did you let my student get the check? Blah, 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 blah. And we would have some parent refunds. It was just, it was a dreaded time of the semester. I'm sure most of you can relate to this. When we went with Pay Meringue, it is very much the same as the invoice process. We have our student refunds in a file. We download that file to Pay Meringue. The students get an email with the instructions and with their refund, and it's a secure email. The first semester that we did it, we did have quite a few, oh, my bank won't take this, oh, blah, blah. And I did actually make a few phone calls to local banks to say, hey, why are you telling our students that you won't take this? We have only found two banks in our area that flat out refuse to take them. And we don't have many students that bank there. Um, so it's been, a, and I, even our bank that we bank with has said, send them to us, we'll take care of them, even if they don't have an account with us. So they get the email, like you said, most of them deposit it directly from their email into their bank mobily. Some of them do print it out. We've been doing the student refunds this way. I think this was our fourth semester doing them, fourth full semester doing them this way. And I don't recall having but a handful of students coming to ask with issues. So it's gone very smoothly. I do have someone on the call that I might connect you with offline. Um, okay. So you can take a deeper dive into that. I want to make sure that I, I you know, I, I want to, she asked me about it and I want to get her with you so you can talk about your experience and et cetera. Absolutely. Um, risk management, we're audited on these each and every single year. Um, I kind of went over this throughout the discussion. Uh, PCI, that's for cars, NACHA, obviously, which has gotten to be kind of crazy with ACHs now. The The point is here is we, um, we we're audited on these each and every year. We send your auditors a packet of these credentials. Through your coalition membership, you have positive pay and name pay, positive pay on all your checks. We're SOC 2 type 2 compliant OFAC. Best practice nowadays is to run run the master vendor record against the OFAC list at least once a month. We run every single payment against the OFAC list so the institution does not have to. That's important because that used to be a lot international, but you guys would be surprised that's a lot domestic now as well. We're a shield when it comes to security. Um, Beverly might, might talk about her issues um, or an issue, I should say, right? Um, with Pamerang or without prior to joining Pamerang um, and how that's been alleviated since her, since her, um, since joining Pamerang. Yes, we did have a few instances of fraudulent checks slipping through the cracks, even though we do have positive pay with our bank and, and did have a few instances of fraud. But I can say with all assurity that since we've gone with Pamering, we have not had a single instance of that. We have a full fraud team internally that monitors everything that you send us. Um, I, and that's important because higher education is the number one target industry when it comes to payment fraud. It's for a surplus of reasons, whether it's gaps in IT security and business email compromise, um, whether it's the large construction projects that we routinely advertise and put up, people will make false bids at it. Um, but the main the main uh, reason is, is a lot of the private nonprofits are short staffed, mm -hmm. which makes it extraordinarily difficult to catch everything that goes out the door. Again, I know last year alone, we saved about $10 million that our clients sent to us that they didn't see. We spot it on our side. We get the FBI involved and we hopefully get those people arrested. So again, it's just a, a shield when it comes to payment fraud, which is which is very important in the higher education world. We have found, and these are statistics that we pulled, we have found that payment automation um, can save anywhere from 80 to 90% in reduction in costs, 80% time saved, 
um, 90 percent of steps eliminated and five times more payments processed. Beverly, I don't know if you want to allude to your time savings or all the steps that were involved with prior to pay meringue and after pay meringue, but with pay meringue, it's, it's again, fund the batch approved, you email done. Yes. And running. Yeah. Like I said earlier, um, you know, our office, I'm not, I'm not encouraging anyone to um, reduce <laughs> the size of your office, but just no. By virtue of the fact that we were not able to replace a position, us going online with Paymering helped us to realize that we didn't have to replace that position. We were able to absorb the additional task and still have extra time. And, and like I said earlier, we've taken on the grants management role at the university additional in addition to this. So, yes. It has saved, I would say, not just in the accounts payable position, but in my position, in the receivables position, and in my financial analyst position. It has saved time. And you still have full visibility to your payments, right, on the yes. portal. We supply you with check images, settlement history. You can log in and pull any type of ad hoc report that you want. Um, you can filter that out by payment types, et cetera. And I can touch on that here in a little bit. And and Tom, to that point, um, I, I had an instance this morning where a coach emailed inquiring if something had been paid. It is so much faster to go into Paymerang and search for that payment than it is to try to weed through Genzabar to find it. And I can, I, get, I can show you, you can filter it out by vendor name, dollar amount. There's a payment ID number that's generated on the checks to be issued file that I'm sure you use. Um, and I can show you guys that at a high level. So implementation is two to three weeks, eight hours of staff time. So it's not a crazy ERP conversion that takes a year and a half. We asked for one call week one, your mid implementation call week two, and then the third, the third call, um, you're up and running on, we're right there with you when you process your first batch. You have a client account manager whose sole purpose is to serve you guys and make sure you are happy. Um, you guys have quarterly check-in calls or however many check-in calls that you want. And um, it's their responsibility to, to um, accommodate needs, uh, escalations, things of that nature. I don't want, I don't, Beverly, I don't know if you want to talk about the responsiveness because that is important about if you need to submit something um, how prompt we are about that and even your implementation process. The implementation process went very smoothly. And I'm going to say this, um, that I don't remember a lot of it, but that's because it did go so smoothly. I do know there have been a couple of, a, a few instances where we have had to reach out because of questions or we weren't sure about something. The chat feature works great on Paymerang. But I'm also very responsive to emails. I just had a new um, employee come in this month. And in the span of about two hours, was able to get her the secured access that she needed to pay right. That is important in the business-to-business -business payment world. Um, again, first-time resolution is, is an hour and a half. And it's an 83% first-time um one touch uh, close on that on that um, issue. You guys do get a nice rebate sent to you quarterly. It's 110 basis points off every card dollar spent. So it's not a blended rate. There's no differentiation between large ticket and small ticket vendor coding. That would then lead to a gross rebate. And then all we do is deduct the small transaction fees and send the rest to you on a quarterly basis. Average institution is making anywhere from 20K to 50K a year, which is always nice. It turns, as Beverly described, the uh, business office into a cost from a cost center to a profit center, which is fantastic. And Pamarine does provide free vendor spend analysis. Is I can help facilitate that if anyone would like to take that route. I am going to show you guys a very quick software demonstration of what it looks like. Give me one second.
already. Beverly, can you see my screen? Yes. Sweet. So this is our portal. Again, AP is going to log in. <clears throat> it's going to be dual factor authentication. You can get a phone call or a text message. Being that it's uh, almost April of 2024, I kind of hope it'd be a text, but that's okay. You can set up phone call if you want. And then you got three sections here. You got active imports, active batches, and completed and canceled batches. You can go back to batches ran months ago and see all the batch details, number of cards, checks, ACHs, uh, and the payments that were made. Of course, all mine say cancel. It's just a demo site. They would get mad at me. But this lives within the system. So this essentially becomes your virtual filing cabinet. So when it's check run time, all we're going to do is grab that weekly check run file or that checks to be issued file. Right now it's doing a full virus scan. Not that Miss Beverly would put any malware on there, but we do want to make sure this thing's secure. And then it's going to take you down to the review status. 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to know that's right because you're just moving the data over from the accounting system whether that be Jensabor, Colleague, Banner, GP, uh, Blackball, QuickBooks, what have you. But an additional layer of review, you can see all the payments queued up in a review status, vendor name, payment ID. AP reviewed it and it all looks good. We're gonna confirm and create the batch. Are you sure? Yes. Then it's gonna take you to the proposed batch. You can drill into the import, if you have any duplicate payments, it's gonna flag you for it here because we all love duplicates. We always get our money back. You can drill into the import. Um, let's say we're reviewing here and where you go, holy smokes, why am I paying ABC vending 12 grand? On the left side, you can drill into it and see it was actually for three different invoices. If you have a coupon or a voucher, you can apply that here. Uh, we'll see the funds on our side and apply those funds from this. This doesn't look right. You can cancel the payment altogether, or if it can go out next week on next, week, next week's check run, you can save it for later. The control totals are gonna to recalculate, and this payment up here is gonna hang out until further investigation within the accounting system. Again, that's gonna maintain your central source of record. We're just working alongside the accounting system. But for the sake of the demo, we're gonna go ahead and pay it. We're going to create the batch, and at this point, AP is totally done. Now, you can see here, waiting for approval, AP would get to this point, then Beverly would get an email notification saying, hey, this batch has been submitted. Can you please log in and review? With Beverly's credentials, she can log in, view the batch details, number of cards, checks, ACHs. Uh, these are going to change real time as we get people converted from check to electronic. You can download anything you want to a PDF. This essentially acts as your check register. You can see invoice details, description, dates, etc. Beverly can scroll down and see all the payments that are in the batch ready to go out the door. She can simply click approve batch. It's not going to let me do it. Bear with me. It's a demo site. They would get upset with me. But then um, VP of Finance or CFO could then get a they could then get an email notification saying, "Hey, this batch has been submitted by AP. It's been reviewed and approved by Beverly." The third level of approval would actually be the wire initiation to that for benefit of account. We can set it up however you want. That's just the example I'm using for the call. Now, you do have if you if AP gets a phone call. Best, pra best practice is there's some tools up here where you can look up payments. They can submit a support ticket. Average resolution time is an hour and a half. Um, but again, then your goal's payments. We're just making them on your behalf. You have a reporting tool here where you can see everything from ACH enrollment. You can run a payment status report. Really good for audit season. Beverly, when's your fiscal year, June to July? Yes, uh, July to June. July to June. I'm going to 
work smarter and not harder, just go in the future a couple months, June. You can filter between ACH check and card, status, set order issued. Client, you can filter between, um, this is for, we work with publicly traded banks, healthcare systems, they can filter between locations here, payer and vendor. These are all the payments made in this time frame. You can go to the payment um, in the batch it was processed, see the payment ID, because it's a checks to be issued file, so it's naturally gonna create a payment ID for reference. The date it was funded, client, internal payment ID, vendor, internal vendor ID, status, status date, the date it was issued, method of payment, delivery method even, check number if that's available, payment amount settled, outstanding refunded and reissued amount. Rate for audit season, because you can export this to a CSV or an Excel, hand it to an auditor and say, here you go, Mr. Mr. Mrs. Auditor, here's all the payments made in this time frame. Google search, you can type in anything from vendor name, I'm gonna use Evergreen, all payments made to Evergreen. You can type in dollar amount, so $44,702 to Evergreen. It'll take you to that payment, or you can type in the payment ID, which is gonna be generated on the checks to be issued file. Type it in, click enter, Evergreen again. They're the problem child. They keep calling me up. Let's go into the payment, see what's going on. Um, you can see everything from payment ID, dollar amount, client name, method of payment, the batch it was processed in, check number, delivery method. You can scroll down and view the invoice details, descriptions, numbers. You can see the notes made down here by our recon team and then the settlement history. So this check went out the door on 411 and it was settled on 416. And when the check does settle, we provide um, Beverly with the front and back image of the actual check. Beverly can print it out and, and mail it to him if she would really want to. She could download it to a PDF and email it to him. But hey, Evergreen, I have the check. Maybe you misapplied the funds. I will send you an image of the actual check. If this went out by card, transaction type would say card. You wouldn't see the card details for PCI compliance. If one went out by ACH, transaction type would say ACH. Of course, you wouldn't need to see or store any sensitive data. Last thing, um, you can run a analytics dashboard. A lot of my controller friends like Beverly love this page. From a high level, this is just a payment rank performance page, if you would. You can see everything from trees saved, card dollars settled, AP hours saved, count of outstanding payments, AP dollars saved, average days to fund. Um, we, we give you guys these linear graphics on what's being paid each month via check, ACH, and card. Top vendors paid by state, 76% electronic. Payments processed each month. Vendors paid by state and average days to sell. So again, really just a payment rank performance page, if you would, um, how payment rank is performing for the institution. So again, we did we didn't over engineer it, you guys, because that things that makes things a little more complex than they need to be. Um, we wanted it to be here's the file, here's the funds, while also giving you guys the full visibility to your payments. Um, Beverly, I don't know if you want to talk about the the ease of uh, the use, the easiest, the e. If I could speak, Tom, how easy it is to use our system here. It's very easy. Like I said, we just um, had a new employee come in the 1st of March and she is already using Paymerang, um, searching for vendors, uploading um, payment files. It, it's been a good practice. And I don't know, you didn't mention it, but at the top of the screen that you had there, you had the uh, register for our um, Learning Tuesdays. Yes. Um, we do those. 
I have my accounts payable person do, do those. And every once in a while, she'll pop in and say, guess what? We can do blah, 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 blah. So it's, it's been a good experience. Good. Um, that was outgoing payment. We do have an invoice product. Again, I'm not going to get for the sake of time. Um, it's really nice if you're decentralized, got invoices coming in from everywhere, multiple departments. Um, we would essentially set up a inbox, AP at institution.edu. All the invoices that hit that inbox, we would set up an order forward rule where those invoices would land into our processor role. Um, processor processes the invoice, uh, sends it off for approval. Approver can log in to approve and ultimately post it to the GL. For paper invoices that come in, you would essentially scan it through a scanner. Same things, same rules apply after that. And you can also bulk upload as well. Again, just a nice way to get everything centralized. Um, a lot of a lot of institutions have invoices coming in from multiple departments, and it can be quite uh, chaotic. We found that invoice automation, just some statistics here, can reduce costs up to sixty to seventy eight percent, eighty percent time saved. Of course, we're not manually hand keying all the invoices into the accounting system which leads to five times more payments processed in the same amount of time. And the average cost of uh, an invoice without payment is $10.95, almost 11 bucks. There she is, my partner in crime. Um, she's on Jen's Bar J1, as we discussed, she's been with payment for about three years. Fun fact is she received her um, Masters of Business at Shorter University, go Hawks. Um, I want to thank you very, very much for being on here. I don't know if you wanted to close any with any statement or anything of that nature, but um, I really do appreciate your time, Beverly. Tom, thank you for allowing me to be on the call. Um, I, I, I know I sound like a broken record, but I cannot reiterate enough how smoothly this process has gone for us with Paymerang. And I literally have nothing negative to say about the process or the way it works for us. It has been an outstanding success. And those of us in higher ed, you know, those are, uh, you know, high hanging fruit. You don't always get to pick those. Feel free to contact me. I don't know if my contact information is on here, but I'm at Reinhardt University. You can find me. Um, I'll be more than happy to, to to speak with any of you about your our our process and answer any questions. Thank you so much again. Um, my contacts on here as well, but Beverly, I, I can easily give you guys Beverly contacts if, if, if you want to reach out to her, talk in more depth, et cetera. Um, at this point, we got three minutes. Um, Anita, if you want to stop the recording and we could just take a couple minutes um, 